So Haxorus is really interesting. The reason being is because Askews are hard to get. You probably have to hatch one. If you find one in the wild, you are one of the luckiest things in the world because it's probably just as rare, if not rarer, than Dratini in Gen 1 when it first came out. I probably like to like probably not like to get it, but like yeah, close to Dratini. So Haxorus is really interesting in this meta because it's a pure dragon type. So where Dragonite is dragon flying and Garchomp is dragon and ground guard uh, Haxorus here is a just pure dragon and it's really interesting because it has a stupid high attack so Haxorus is one of the highest attack ranked in master premier cup it has such a high attack rating that you probably won't lose cmp and its overall stat product actually isn't super bad if you look at the defense and the stamina it's actually pretty dang good so what you what Haxorus specialty is is that it has counter so with counter it's able to generate a ton of energy and fighting has a really strong pick in a as a really strong matchup against a lot of typings in masters premier cup now if you look at the weaknesses it's weak against very few things the main problems are there's a lot of dragonites there's also a lot of toga kisses so seeing those two you also have the potential threat of seeing big Bacon, Ice Pig, Mamoswine, in Go Battle League. So those are the three things you just really have to watch out for. Other than that, you resist Wild Charge users. Fire doesn't do anything against you, so Charizard does not do much at all. Hydro Cannons do nothing. Well, don't do, they don't do nothing, but they do very little to you. So you resist everything elemental. As you see, Pure Dragons is a very unique typing. Not sporting many resistances or weaknesses either. However, that can be good or bad. We'll see just how it is in the Matrix. As I've analyzed before this video, Haxorus is actually pretty good in a lot of scenarios. The problem is, it's not really Glass Cannon, but it doesn't have a lot of a defense and stamina. So if it is weak to something, per se, like Dragon Breaths or Tarms, it's going to do a, it's going to hurt a lot. So Haxorus, the biggest thing about Haxorus is probably it's really hard to get. And it's expensive. Anything in Master Premier Cup, or if you're trying to power that thing up to level 4, try to make it swole, it's really, really hard really expensive and you're gonna have to burn another 75 grand if you want the second move for hackers and along with that it's hard to find candy nine times out of ten you're probably either one if you saw ask you the wild you're probably throwing the giant pineapple at its face and then you throw the ultra ball at it however if that's not the case or you hatch it from 10k eggs then you know what you're doing you are throwing all that rare candy you gathered all from raiding and you're shoving it into your ask you's mouth and you're telling you get big and evolve and it's a lot of candy it's a lot of candy. So you're going to have a lot of rare candy. It's really expensive at this point because there is no... And there is no SQ event in the near future so that you can actually get a Haxorus easily. So be aware. You're going to use a lot of resources for Haxorus. However, Haxorus' strength is its really interesting moveset. As you see, it has Night Slash, Dragon Claw, Counter, Dragon Tail, Serpent, Earthquake. It's extremely versatile. You can build Haxorus and use it to target potential types. For example, Earthquake does yeet Metagrosses and it does yeet those Wild Charge users as well. Night Slash takes out Metagross, Surf takes out those Rhyperiors, and Dragon Claw is extremely spammy. You get stabbed and it only takes 5 counters to get the Dragon Claw and Night Slash. With counter plus whatever in the back, it's extremely powerful because it's able to cover so much ground. Now, the big problem is, is like I said, it's really expensive. So, Haxorus is really cool. If it's shiny does come out, it's this really, it's like, it's so cool. Oh my gosh. Like, I can if you thought going after Dino was like the greatest thing since sliced bread, look at that. It's black red. It's like a, it's a black dragon. It's a black red dragon. It's really freaking cool and really, it's so cool. Look at that. Look at that. That's a sweet shiny. Looks medieval, looks menacing, it's amazing. And when it does come out to Pokemon Go, you might spend a lot of money on it.
keyword is Mike. So Haxorus is ranked 21 overall for Master Premier Cup. A few of my friends were actually using Haxorus for their streams, and they they really liked it. Haxorus is really good because of the spam, counter damage. Counter is just such a great move overall. You get a lot of energy, deals a good chunk of damage, and Haxorus' coverage is nuts. As you see, counter Dragon Claw, Night Slash, and Haxorus ranks at number 21 best positioned in the lead because if you manage to catch it if you manage to catch the lead you're able to use those night slashes and dragon claws to bait shields or you're able to get a huge advantage on what comes into the back because haxorus will outpace a lot of things it only takes five counters so it's very likely like i said you will outpace a lot of the meta it's a great charger not the best but it's really really good and the fact that you can outpace a lot of things with dragon claw and night slash it's very powerful plus you it has stupid high attack. You're going to win CMP against almost like everything. So just keep that in mind. As you see, it's key wins. It beats, it's a dragon that beats Metagross. It beats Metagross, Magnezone, Snorlax, Swampert, Rhyperior. It's very powerful. However, that doesn't mean there's not a lot of weaknesses as well. So Haxorus is a really great, I would say like, a, a, like it, beating Metagross itself is really cool. It's really strong against what it's like, it's what it's strong against. For example, those are high ratings for against Metagross, Magnezone, Swampert, those are high rates. However, you lose against Gyarados, Machamp, Garchomp, Dragonite, and Togekiss. These are really popular picks. If you see Togekiss, you need to run. Remember I was talking about that Haxorus is kind of squishy. It's not. It's like a glass. It's kind of like a glass can. It doesn't have a high def. If you see Togekiss, this is what Togekiss does to you. You die to six charms. Six charms. It only takes six charms. Level 41 ain't gonna save your soul at this one. Even if you're at level 41, watch what happens. It doesn't it doesn't matter. It don't matter. It don't matter. You still go and die. Now, it allows you to survive one more charm, but that doesn't really make a difference. You still die. <laughs> you're still gonna die. So if you still get this, run. That's why it's best position in the lead. You want to keep Haxorus away from its weaknesses. It can have a chance against Garchomp and Dragonite, etc., but you need an energy lead. Otherwise, it's gonna be really dangerous for you to use Garchomp. I mean, for you to use Haxorus. Again, best positioned in the lead. As you see in the lead, Haxorus ranks at number 11, taking out Metagross at its, its old counters, as you saw overall. Not really best as a closer, ranks at 49. It's kind of, as you see, like it, at, at the closing scenario, you'll actually lose against Metagross at this point. So you'll look, so you really want to take a look at what you, like where you want to position Haxorus. Like I said, best used in the lead for sure. As you see, it doesn't rank very highly in the closer or the switch, but in the lead, it ranks at 11, which is pretty good. So Haxorus is really interesting because, like I said, it has a lot of moves. But for this analysis, I'm only going to do three of them. I don't recommend you use Surf because Surf doesn't really have a lot of use in Master Premier Cup. There's a lot of things that resist Surf, and at the same time, you don't get stabbed. It's better You're better off just baiting with Dragon Claw or Night Slash because it costs less energy. So Haxorus in general is is really good it ha like i said you can use probably you i will take a look at how earthquake does so for this analysis we're going to do the standard moveset dragon claw night slash both cost 35 energy five counters to get to really fast really easy and we're going to do earthquake with night slash and earthquake with dragon claw like i said there's no reason for you to use surf and you don't want to use dragon tail dragon tail is a horrible move you want counter so we run the sim and we're going to run in two shields Haxorus is best used in the lead so the two shield scenario is probably what you want to look at the most as you see in the two shields, you actually roast Charizard because you resist those fire spins, and you could shield the Dragon Claws. You also beat Conkeldur. You be you lose against Drag. This is where it gets really dangerous. If you do see Dragonite, if you do see Char Char Togekiss, you have to run. There's no choice. The reason being is because if you look at the Sim for Dragonite, look, you just get Dragon Breath down. Dragon Breath does so much damage. And Dragon, I think I think Dragonite can even live a Dragon Claw. So if they don't shield this. I think if they don't even, if you don't shield, so don't shield attack, see what happens. They still live with a hefty amount of HP, so they can take your, they can take your Night Slash. If you see Dragonite, if you see Dragon Breath, run, run, or Charms, run. You beat Gar, here's where it gets interesting. You actually beat Garchomp in the two shield. So where Garchomp beats you in the rest of the scenarios, you actually beat it in the two shield. So you beat Garchomp in the lead. Garchomp, you beat it in the two shield. You also beat both variations. So you'll beat Earthquake and you'll beat Santum. So you can shield both Santums and then beat Garchomp still. Now you also beat Gengar, you beat Glaceon. Ironically, since Glaceon, since dragons are weak against ice, you lose against Gyarados. Remember I was talking about Dragon Breath? Run. If you see Dragon Breath Gyarados, run. But if you see Waterfall, you can stay. Because dragons resist water. So, yeah. 
You also beat Machamp in the lead, which is pretty nuts. You beat and you beat. Let's see, Magnazone. You beat you beat Mamoswine. Even though the powder, how do you you beat Mamoswine? That's actually really nuts. Wow, you could go straight Dragon Claw. I mean, straight Night Slash against Big Snow Pig, and Big Snow Pig actually dies. Yeah, Big Snow Pig. You actually beat Mamoswine into two. Wow, that's pretty huge. So you actually beat the rest of everything. You beat Metagross. You beat Rhyperior. You beat Scizor. You beat Mudslap. You beat both Snorlax. You beat Swampert. The only thing you lose against is... To and you beat everything but Togekiss, which is pretty nuts. So the only things you really have to watch out for are Dragon Breath users and Charmers. Other than that, you beat everything else in the meta in the two shield, which is pretty nuts. So, Haxorus is actually, in my opinion, would be one of the best leads in the game. Because if you only have to avoid two typings, as long as you're not going against, I'd say, like... As long as you're not going against, I'd say, like, something like Double Weak Tail. For example, if they have Togekiss in the back with your Haxorus, then you're dead. But if you manage to pivot away and win Switch, you might actually be able to use Haxorus to beat a lot of the meta. But in the meta, in the, like, that's just pretty crazy. So, the only thing that... In the two shield, so the only things in a lead that you convincingly lose to are Charmers and Dragon Breath users. That is nuts. Now let's take a look at the one shield. So in the one shield, we get this. Now this is where it gets interesting. Now Haxorus is strongest in the lead. What happens if you're in even shield scenarios? Go to the left. You still beat, you start to lose, you lose against Garchomp. That's a big one. You beat Charizard, you beat Conkeldur, be Electrifier. You lose against Garchomp. So this is where you'll lose against Garchomp. You'll still be Gyarados. You also lose against Machamp. So you lose against Garchomp and Machamp in the one shield. Other than that, you still beat everything else. So you pick up a few weaknesses. But you'll still lose against Charmers. You'll still lose against Dragon Breathers users, of course. But that's pretty dang good. Being able to beat everything else with being able to beat everything else and only dropping the Garchomp and the Machamp matchup is pretty dang huge. So in the one shield, you only lose, you lose, you start losing more to like, Gar you lose to Garchomp and Machamp, as repeated. What happens in the closer? This is probably where, where Haxorus is in the worst position, even though it dishes out a lot of damage. Unless it one-shots with Dragon Claw or Night Slash, it doesn't do much. And if you take a look, it looks like Earthquake doesn't really do much for you. It looks like you could still win with just its other ulterior moveset, so you don't really need Earthquake. In the zeros, it looks like Earthquake does happen to flip something. It does flip an Electrovire matchup. You beat Charizard. This is where you'll start losing a lot of things. So having Earthquake will actually allow you to beat Electivire, Machamp. You still beat Magnezone without it. Let's see. You lose against Mamoswine, Rhyperior, and you beat everything else. So you'll beat Scizor, Snorlax, Shadow Snorlax, Swampert. You'll still lose against Charmers. So just stay away from Charmers. But it looks like in the only thing in the difference in the zeros, it looks like Earthquake does matter in the zeros. But it, you only flip Electivire. Machamp and Magnezone. Now those are relevant matchups and Rhyperior. So those are relevant matchups, but it looks like Dragon Claw Night Slash. Well, you could still so you could use Earthquake, but because you lose that coverage with either the Dragon or the the Dark typing, I would definitely really con I would consider like what you want to run it for, or like the moves that you want to use. Now, up a shield, what does Haxorus do? If we take the shields and we have Haxorus with a shield, what does it do? So Haxorus with shield advantage in the one and the zeros gives you, you still lose against Dragon Breath users and you still lose against, so, wow. So you'll beat everything in the meta up a shield as, well, in the one and zeros. So we'll take a look at the two to ones. But in the one and zeros, you beat everything but Dragon Breath and Charmers. That's pretty dang good. I don't think you still win in the two shield. So if you're in the two to zero situation, I still think you'll lose against Dragon Breath and Charmers just because they do so much damage. As you see, you don't flip any. You'll beat everything but Dragon Breath users and Charmers up shielded like, up two shields. So Haxorus is a monster. Now the two to ones. This is where it's probably the more interesting one. Like yeah, you have shield advantage. What happens when you have shield advantage? If you had shield advantage, you still win against everything. Wow. So Haxorus will only lose to a lot of its matchups if it's in the zeros. In the zeros or the in the zeros or the ones. And even in the ones, you don't drop a lot of matchups. In the two to ones, you still beat everything but Charmers and Dragon Breath users. Haxorus is really dang good. It doesn't look like Earthquake really flips anything. 
Like I say, dude, well, it does flip some matchups, but not, like, relevant enough, I think, to, like, really matter as much as, like... Because in the two shield, so in summary, Haxorus is really freaking good. If you have one, I consider using it. You'll want one as close to perfect as possible, though. Because Haxorus is, as you see, Haxorus, it doesn't really, Earthquake doesn't really look like it matters. You don't really need Earthquake. In fact, Earthquake gives you a weaker matchup against Metagross. But if you boost with Night, like Night Slash, you can boost too. So in summary, Haxorus is really freaking good. Being it, the like, it, wow, it has so much utility and it's actually really freaking strong. The big detriment to it is that you Garchomp, you beat it in the two shield. You also beat both variations. So you'll beat Earthquake and you'll beat Sandtomb. So you can shield both Sandtombs and then beat Garchomp still. Now, you also beat Gengar, you beat Glaceon. Ironically, since Glaceon, since Dragons are weak against Ice, you lose against Gyarados. Remember I was talking about Dragon Breath? Run. If you see Dragon Breath, Gyarados, run. But if you see Waterfall, you can stay. Because Dragons resist water. So, yeah. You also beat Machamp in the lead, which is pretty nuts. You beat, and you beat, let's see, Magnezone, you beat, you beat Mamoswine. Even though the powder, how do you, you beat Mamoswine? That's actually really nuts. Wow, you could go straight Dragon Claw, I mean straight Night Slash against Big Snow Pig, and Big Snow Pig actually dies. Yeah, Big Snow Pig. You actually beat Mammoth Swine into two. Wow, that's pretty huge. So you actually beat the rest of everything. You beat Metagross, you beat Rhyperior, you beat Scizor, you beat Mudslap, you beat both Snorlax, you beat Swampert. The only thing you lose against is to end, you beat everything but Togekiss, which is pretty nuts. So the only things you really have to watch out for are Dragon Breath users and Charmers. Other than that, you beat everything else in the meta in the two shield, which is pretty nuts. So Haxorus is actually, in my opinion, would be one of the best leads in the game. Because if you only have to avoid two typings, as long as you're not going against, I'd say like... As long as you're not going against, I'd say like... Something like double weak to for example, if they have Togekiss in the back with your Haxorus, then you're dead. But if you manage to pivot away and win Switch, you might actually be able to use Haxorus to beat a lot of the meta. But in the meta, in the, like, that's just pretty crazy. So the only things that, in the two shield, so the only things in a lead that you convincingly lose to are Charmers and Dragon Breath users. That is nuts. Now let's take a look at the one shield. So in the one shield, we get this. Now this is where it gets interesting. Now, Haxorus is strongest in the lead. What happens if you're in even shield scenarios? Go to the left. You still beat... You start to lose... You lose against Garchomp. That's a big one. You beat Charizard. You beat Conkeldurr. Be Electrifier. You lose against Garchomp. So this is where you'll lose against Garchomp. You'll still beat Gyarados. You also lose against Machamp. So you lose against Garchomp and Machamp in the one shield. Other than that, you still beat everything else. So you pick up a few weaknesses. But you'll still lose against Charmers. You'll still lose against Dragon Breathers users, of course. But that's pretty dang good. Being able to beat everything else with being able to beat everything else and only dropping the Garchomp and the Machamp matchup is pretty dang huge. So on the one shield, you only lose you lose you start losing more to like Gar you lose to Garchomp and Machamp, as repeated. What happens in the closer? This is probably where where Haxorus is in the worst position, even though it dishes out a lot of damage, unless it one shots with Dragon Claw or Night Slash, it doesn't do much. And if you take a look, it looks like Earthquake doesn't really do much for you. It looks like you can still win with just its other ulterior movesets. So you don't really need Earthquake. In the Zeros, it looks like Earthquake does happen to flip something. It does flip an Electrovire matchup. You beat Charizard. This is where you'll start losing a lot of things. So having Earthquake will actually allow you to beat Electrovire. Machamp, you still beat Magnezone without it. Let's see, you lose against Mamoswine. Rhyperior, and you beat everything else so you'll be scissor snorlax shadow snorlax swampert you'll still lose against charmers so just stay away from charmers but it looks like in the only thing in the difference in the zeros it looks like earthquake does matter in the zeros but it, you only flip electivire modchamp and magnezone now those are relevant matchups and right period so those are relevant matchups but it looks like dragon claw night slash well you could still so you could use earthquake but because you lose that coverage with either the dragon or the the dark typing, I would definitely really con I would consider like what you want to run it for, or like the moveset you want to use. 
Now, up a shield, what does Haxorus do? If we take the shields and we have Haxorus with a shield, what does it do? So Haxorus with shield advantage in the one and the zeros gives you, you still lose against Dragon Breath users and you still lose against, so, wow. So you'll beat everything in the meta up a shield as, well, in the one and zeros. So we'll take a look at the two to ones. But in the one and zeros, you beat everything but Dragon Breath and Charmers. That's pretty dang good. I don't think you still win in the two shield. So if you're in the two to zero situation, I still think you'll lose against Dragon Breath and Charmers just because they do so much damage. As you see, you don't flip any. You'll beat everything but Dragon Breath users and Charmers up shielded, like up two shields. So Haxorus is a monster. Now the two to ones, this is where it's probably the more interesting one. Like, yeah, you have shield advantage. What happens when you have shield advantage? If you had shield advantage, you still win against everything. Wow. So Haxorus will only lose to a lot of its matchups if it's in the zeros. In the zeros or the in the zeros or the ones. And even in the ones, you don't drop a lot of matchups. In the two to ones, you still beat everything but Charmers and Dragon Breath users. Haxorus is really dang good. It doesn't look like Earthquake really flips anything. Like I say, dude, well, it does flip some matchups, but not, like, relevant enough, I think, to, like, really matter as much as, like... Because in the two shield, so in summary, Haxorus is really freaking good. If you have one, I consider using it. You'll want one as close to perfect as possible, though. Because Haxorus is, as you see, Haxorus, it doesn't really... Earthquake doesn't really look like it matters. You don't really need Earthquake, in fact, Earthquake gives you a weaker matchup against Metagross. But if you boost with Night, like Night Slash, you can boost too. So in summary, Haxorus is really freaking good. Being it the, like, it, wow, it has so much utility and it's actually really freaking strong. You kind of have to watch out for Dragon Breath and Charmers, but that's pretty much it. As long as you can pivot away from Dragon Breath and Charmers, you're really good. You can, so... And also, just like how counter, as you see, counter generates a lot of energy. Counter generates 7 energy, 8 damage. And it's really, it's really, it's a two-turn move. Really fast, really powerful. And it's charge moves, Night Slash for Night Slash. Night Slash only takes 35 energy. So it only takes 5 counters to get to Night Slash and for Dragon Claw. Both will do 35 energy. You'll get stabbed with Dragon Claw too. Earthquake takes a little more to get to. Like I said, if you want to use it, it's up to you. But it takes 10 counters to get to Earthquake. With those 10 counters, you can get 2 Dragon Claws or 2 Night Slashes. So it's really up to how you want to play it. If you're trying to use Earthquake to flip the Electric, like Electivire or the Magneton matchup, it looks you don't really need it. It looks like the only difference it makes is if you're in the Closer versus Magnezone. So, or Electivire. So that's the only difference it makes. Other than that, you still win. So... As you saw in the Zero Shield. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, to the left, you flip all... Like, Paxos is really stupid strong. It looks like in any in every scenario, except the ones and the zeros, it beats everything but Charmers and Dragon Breath users. So, I would definitely invest in one. If you have a perfect, use it. Or try to get as per close to perfect as possible. Again, best use in a lead. Take, stay away from Charmers and Dragon Breath users, and you will rock the meta. That's actually, it's probably an anti- Haxorus is probably the best anti-meta pick in the game. You guys have a great day. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.